MTN listeners and viewers, welcome to this week's interview with your host and guide, Anthony Drago. It's always a pleasure to be here uh, because of just, you know, we have a good time. We, we get information on contemporary topics. We explore it from an angle that's not, contem not necessarily contemporary, but very, very, um, you know, at a, at a unique angle. Where you can see it from a from a different perspective. That's the objective, anyway, to do it in such a way that you get a different perspective on stuff that is supposed to be contemporary. Um, Al Kai, we always say, if you can get what we do by simply clicking your mouse or your remote, then there's no need for us. And we've been doing it for 13 years, and some of you have been with us for all of those years. So welcome, welcome back. Um, one more time, and tonight is no exception. I am having a conversation with uh, a very illustrious young man. He is the president. He's done a lot, but tonight he's wearing the hat as the president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, the DIC. And so he's here with us tonight. His name is Mr. Brenton Hilaire. And so we'll be right back. I don't go nowhere because this conversation I know you're going to find very, very interesting. We'll be right back. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, regular listeners, as I said, um, I always appreciate you making this weekend interview part of your weekly schedule. And if tonight is the first time that you listen to this weekend interview, special welcome to you. I hope you like what you hear sufficiently to make you come back and convert you into a regular listener and viewer. Those of you in Dominica on the Nature Isle, we are carried live by RVR Jams Radio on DigiPlay Channel 59. Good evening to you in the Toronto area. Radio SBE online carries this weekly interview live. Welcome to you in Toronto. Of course, we are on the various social media platforms. Tonight, somebody said, um, I see you guys are on Roku. He said, that's impressive. Yeah, we are on Roku. We are on several um of the of the social media platforms um because everybody has a preference as to what media they want to use to to join us um tonight on tdn tv we are on channel two tdn tv channel two because channel one is carrying the meeting that is taking place in dominica um the opposition um user forces or, or members who are seeking change in Dominica um, from the current regime, are having a meeting to once again um, inform everyone that they haven't lost sight of their demand for electoral reform. So that is ongoing. And so tonight on, on Facebook, we are just on the district interview Facebook page because um, TDN Radio's Facebook page is carrying that meeting live. And TDN TV Channel 1 is carrying that meeting live. Uh, we wish those folks, uh, they already have a successful event. I looked at the crowd, it's, it's significant. Um, safe passage back home when they're done. And um, we would like to see momentum build uh, so that uh, so there's so many folks who are advocating for some kind of change in the electoral process. And it's been promised by all sides. We hope that they, that they get it. Um, and it's relevant to the topic that we have tonight, because tonight I will, my guest is Mr. Brenton Hiller. He is the president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. Uh, he is the agency manager of Sajikor Life, um, and the opposition that he has held um, for what, some seven years? He's been there since January 2016. 
So he's with us tonight as my guest on this week in interview, the president of the Dominic Association of Industry and Commerce. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Um, he sent he sent me a short bio, and I'm going to read it because for a number of reasons, because we hear a lot of negative stuff coming out of Dominica. Um, but every once in a while, we come across someone who has applied himself and has achieved a lot. And um, maybe reading out his accomplishment is going to inspire at least one young person in the audience. Um, maybe if you here and you have a young son or daughter, you can have them look at this section of the of tonight's program so they can they can get a template that they can use and modify but but that can that can show progress so i'm going to read um his short bio at um so as i said before he is the agency manager at surgical life dominica and he held that position since 2016. he is also uh, he's president of the dominica association of industry and commerce which brings him by this weekend interview from August of last year. Um, at Sajiko, he has obtained the following awards in 2018, Branch and General Agency of the Year, Gold Honors Club, Branch Agency Annualized Premium Income, Branch Agency Cases. At present, he's also a member of the Bureau of Standards and National Standards Council. He is a certified John Maxwell coach, teacher, trainer and speaker, uh, a Toastmaster, being a member of the Nature Isle Toastmaster Club and National Cooperative Credit Union Toastmaster Club. I'll take a pause here and really invite young people or anybody who's listening to this program that if you have any interest at all in communicating, check out the Toastmaster program, no matter where you are in the world. Um, they are there, they have meetings that are very flexible. and. Even if it's just you stand up at your son's or daughter's first communion and tell folks thank you for coming, it, it, Toastmaster teaches you how to do that so much more effectively. Um, you will be surprised at the change, make an effect in your work and all of that. I will give print on the chance to maybe talk about that if we if time permits. In the past, he served as a director Vice President of Dominico Association of Industry and Commerce, is Director uh, of the National Bank of Dominica. Uh, at the time of his term, he was the bank's youngest director. He's a Rotarian, we um, an Area Division C Director of Toastmasters International District 81, responsible for a team overseeing clubs in seven territories. He was the first individual from Dominica to have held the position of divisional director. He holds designation of certified accounting technician, associate, life management institute, associate from custom of customer service, competent communicator, accredited director, human resource and compensation committee certified. In addition to the above, Brenton has done several courses with Loma and Limra and UE Cave Hill School of Business on the topic of insurance, of sales, sales marketing, strategic management, and leadership, to name a few. Brenton is also passionate about public speaking, and some of his previous engagements are as follows. In 2016, featured speaker at the Rosa Primary School graduation ceremony. 2016 featured speaker of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Financial Information Month theme launch. 2017 featured speaker of the Adolescent Skills Training Program graduation ceremony. Motivational speaker at Unicoma staff meeting. Featured speaker of Orion Academy graduation ceremony. Featured speaker at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Financial Information Month sales. Fundamentals presenter at the National Bank of Dominica, past student speaker of the Dominica Grammar School, Go DGS, <laughs> uh, public speaker at the Alpha World John Academy, developing in business strategies at the Dominica Youth Business Trust, business climate and trends on exploring investment opportunity webinar 
will be investment Dominica authority. I hope we're, we're going to spend some time on that in terms of opportunities for investors and investment and business in Dominica. And the list is long. Um, in addition to the above features, featured speaker arrangement engagement, he has also been invited to speak at various groups like the Rotaract of Dominica, the JC's International Dominica, Rotary Club, Lions Club, Adolescent Skills Training Program, Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. And I wish to thank him for being with us because he sounds like he doesn't sleep. <laughs> Brenton, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation to come. And thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on your program this evening. Yeah, it's really, it's really an honor to have you. I took, I took the pain to not the pain, but the pleasure to read your resume to the fullest, um, because I admire your accomplishment and and you look like a relatively young man still. And it seems like you forward leaning. Um, you get invitations and you accept those invitations and you show up. And that is what I get from, from reading this. And so I read it on purpose so that to, it can inspire who are up and coming, folks who are in the profession and you know you want to do more and you go online instead. Uh, you know, there are benefits in pursuing some of the some of our potential. So we have an hour, so I'm not going to take too much time, um, but to jump right in and to ask you to introduce yourself uh, <laughs> and also and also the organization in Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. Okay, thank you. I think you did a very good job to introduce me, but I will share some tidbits of me that is not included in the bio. So I am Brenton Hillier. I come from the community of Roseau. Back in the day, they would say Ja Rosso. Uh -huh. so, born and raised in Rosso, but my family comes from the south of the island, I'm talking about Pitisaba and Forseja area. And I would say I'm a son of the soil. I am one that remained in Dominica. I saw an opportunity to take the course of correspondent learning. So rather than going to college, I use the opportunity to work gain work experience while educating myself on island and in all of the things that i've done it's really about giving back and it's something that i've realized about myself i take pride i get enjoyment in sort of inspiring and helping others to think big i think that in this day and age we have too much negativity if we go on facebook and we scroll for the timeline we see a lot of unfortunate negative posts. So I try to be the beacon of hope that, hey, if I can do it, so can you. Yes, we may not have the fortunes that other families may have, but within our own capacities, we can find ways, small measures, small steps that can help us to develop and find some way of giving back to Dominica community and our family by extension. And I mean, the cottage show, that is what ultimately led me to being a part of the chamber. So I've taken part in different organizations to develop myself, to give back. But being in my current position, I had the ultimate goal. And that's something that has helped me in my life. I always try to think two, three steps ahead. And being in the current position that I am in, I manage a sales team. And Sales is dependent on getting new clients. For you to get new clients, people need to have money. And I saw the chamber as an opportunity to get a deeper dive into what's happening in the private sector and see how I could maybe contribute to make the private sector more vibrant, more strong. And at the end of the day, I would naturally benefit because I'm in sales. But the fact is, it's a sacrifice. And even if one may be thinking like that, you still have to be willing to give up your time because we take part on the chamber and it is gratis. We don't get paid. We do it solely for the love of country and for the love of seeing, sorry, seeing our fellow man grow and expand and improve in the economy that we're operating in. And the chamber now, Dominican Association of Industry and Commerce, has been around for 50 years. And it's basically the leading private sector 
representative body in Dominica. So we represent a very diverse group of businesses, all ranging from the small, small sole proprietor, average size businesses, and going up to the, what you would say, the conglomerates, the big boys in the market. So it's a very diverse group. And our objective essentially is to provide value. To keep it simple, the mission is to provide value. It's not just a group that you're part of, but as the executive, we have the objective of understanding where our members may have challenges to assist them, advocating for some of the concerns that they may have, looking for opportunities for networking, trading, and different things to help their business. So I initially joined as a director, then from director, I moved to a vice president, and then from vice president, I'm now in the current position of president. All free labor, all free service, but with the aim of seeing how I can play my part to help Dominica's economy. Because I believe at the end of the day, we cannot depend on the government. We all have a part to play in the development of Dominica. And whether we are in Dominica, whether we are overseas, we can contribute. And you see, even through this program that you're hosting, even if maybe you might be somewhere out of Dominica, you could be in China, you could be in Japan, but just having a program like this, having someone from Dominica speak about their contribution and what they can do can inspire and open up the minds of someone else. So I always encourage all Dominicans, wherever they are, to find some kind of way of giving back. It doesn't have to be monetary. Sometimes just sharing an idea can right. make a significant impact on how things are done in Dominica. Yeah, certainly. And so the 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 association of industry and commerce is an association of businesses as um as distinct from dominica employers federation which sort of represents can you because some people are more familiar with employers federation yeah does that still exist in dominica it still exists from what i understand so employers federation i believe focuses more on sort of employment management circumstances contract negotiations reviewing That's your operations right. providing with training to you know handle human resource matters things like that but for us mm -hmm. it goes across the board and because our representation is so diverse we find ourselves speaking on several different matters because the interests, the needs of the small proprietor is significantly different from that of the large players in the market. So we always have to play this balancing act of finding out, okay, what does this group need? How can I provide value to them? And at the same time, what does this other group need? How can I provide value to them? So just to share an example of some of the activities that we have done. For small proprietors, we have held some trainings around financial management. One of the things we hear about within the MSME sector, I think it's the same in the American market, is sometimes the absence of records. And we know that to access finance, that is always something that is going to come up, always. Mm -hmm. So we've had trainings on that during the pandemic when businesses were shut down. We had trainings around social media use and e-commerce to help them. And for the large players, I mean, the large players generally have the department set up for that. So for example, I can speak of my company, we have a marketing department, we have an IT department. So those sort of trainings may not really be relevant for us, but for a company like us, there may be other areas where we want some advocacy support on, where we see that some things could change in the legal framework that could help us do business easier. So it's different. and. At the end of the day, it's really about value. However, we can provide value to our members, we pursue those opportunities. Okay, so during during the pandemic, when most people were shut down, we saw an explosion of sole proprietor enterprises, businesses, people who turned their hobbies into um into a business. We right. saw folks who maybe lost employment because of the, the nature of, of the service could no longer be offered because it involved interaction of people 
And so we saw people coming into light manufacturing of food products or personal care products. Uh, everybody turned, seemed, turned up as an entrepreneur. <laughs> So did that translate into like a boost in membership of the, of, of the organization? Correct, it did. The same thing that you heard happening in the wider world occurred mm -hmm. in Dominica. Maybe it may not have been as observed as the other markets because it's we are different in terms of our news agencies and reporting. We know that in America, everything in America is about data. They always mm -hmm. have to push numbers and say, we have had an expansion, 20% in entrepreneurship and whatnot. They go that far, but we don't do that in the Caribbean, unfortunately. I believe we will get there one day. But we saw the same trend in Dominica specifically, where the COVID pandemic brought about the emergence of the side hustles, quote unquote. So people try, I guess, trying to sustain their income during the pandemic, looked to side gigs, started companies, some went into entrepreneurship. I know an individual who actually started a side business and left his full-time employment to focus fully on the side business because the side business was doing so well. Right. And that has really boosted our membership. So during the COVID pandemic, we saw an increase in our MSME membership within the chamber. And a lot of it came from the agro processing industry. So definitely something that we have seen is a sort of boost or boom in that direction where a lot of people are going towards agro processing. And you mentioned investing, there is definitely an opportunity there if people are looking for areas that they can potentially invest in. And it's simple things. We have examples of people taking natural produce and creating teas, mm -hmm. packaged teas. I know back in the old days, for those of us who are old enough, when you thought about teas, it was about getting the raw leaf and putting it in a cup and pouring hot water in the cup and letting it boil. And that was it for us. But we have seen it gone a step further with some of our agro processors where they have actually made it, made it into a dust, like what we would import from America. Mm -hmm. and you pour it and it's an instant tea. Don't right. Don't think about herbal pots, herbal sauce, instant tea. So we've seen a right. lot of things like that. People are now making natural masks. People are making soaps, natural soaps, natural shampoos. For example, JD's. JD's natural is doing very well. And I just saw today that she posted she will be in Matnik to show off her products. So there has definitely been a boom within the agro processing industry and not just there but just in entrepreneurship on a whole because you've also had the emergence of what i call the business support services or the business support organization so social media managers the virtual assistants mm -hmm. and you have the accountants provided remote services so it has been an opportunity for many i would say it was a tough and challenging time, but at the same time, some people saw the opportunity in it and were able to thrive despite the challenges that it presented. You 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 made an acronym. I want you to say what it is. MSME. What 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 do you mean when you say particularly in MSME? MSME medium size enterprises. Okay, okay. So so those are the small one person two person um, right enterprises that started up and therefore they were they're the manager they're the financial controller they're the marketing and they still come back and, and, and do the, the actual work with their hands and so so what you're saying that those type of folks were able to get support and resources from the dominica association industry and commerce now in terms of direct financial resources. We are not an organization that provides no, 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 but, but uh -huh. mm -hmm. support through access to training, training, access to networks, maybe facilitating or assisting them to access the finance that's available at the different financial institutions. We assisted in some areas, so we provided support in that sort of way. So if somebody say, okay, I started this business on my own, um, my funds are kind of commingled because 
that's where I was taking my living from. So I put some money in, I made some money, I put some back in, and my money grew. And now I want to organize it into a regular business. Go get a loan. They can come to the AIC. They are a member of the AIC. And you guys have resources to help them to shape their approach to like a financial institution? We have members who we can direct them to. Okay. Sorry, who can assist them with that? So we don't do the hands-on in terms of mm -hmm. doing the actual record keeping and the financial documents for them. But we have members within the chamber who can provide that sort of assistance to them. And because of the nature of the chamber, they will be able to access those funds at, sorry, access those services at a reduced rate. So we often have occasions where, for example, an accountant within the chamber might say, for all members of the chamber, we will offer you 10% off or 25% off if you require services of ours. Mm -hmm. So we right. are able to provide those sort of avenues for them. Right. And I imagine also uh, uh, just started um, enterprise in manufacturing would be able to talk to somebody who's an established manufacturer, whether DCP or one of the other manufacturing, and get some ideas and tips about, about right. policy and so on. So, so, so I, I can see where that that is a benefit. Yeah, we we are at the bottom of the hour, and so I'm going to take a very quick break. Come back. We we are going to talk. You mentioned something that suggested that um, the chamber can advocate on behalf of businesses in general and go to government or go to the banks and say, if you were able to do A, it would make things easier for our members and therefore benefit the economy. So I, I want to talk about some of those kind of advocacy and representative work that the um, chamber does for businesses as soon as we come back from, from the break to a forward from our sponsors. Sure. Presented by. People say I've got a great smile. Well, I have to say, this is all thanks to the professional team at Beacon Dental Group right here in Dorchester, Massachusetts. I've got world-class dental care. Beacon Dental Group has expert and caring staff dedicated to providing the most advanced and satisfactory treatment in all aspects of oral health. Their services are designed to meet your needs and give you a perfect smile, too. General checkups, cosmetic surgery, Gemini laser service, and advanced procedures, all in a state-of-the-art facility. Call or visit Beacon Dental Group today, 1026 Blue Hill Avenue, Dorchester, Massachusetts, or call 617-282-2146 for a smile that lights the world. If you live in Canada, the U.S., and the U.K., and are looking for Dominica products, including cocoa sticks, bay rum, coffee, soaps, crafts, and other popular Dominica items, then look no further. You can now shop on BuyDominicaOnline.com, a secure, easy-to-navigate website selling a wide variety of Dominica-made and Dominica-inspired products. When you shop on BuyDominicaOnline.com, you are helping to grow Dominica's economy. Go to BuyDominicaOnline.com and enjoy home away from home. Looking to promote your business, engage current customers, and reach new people? Well, look no further. From the basic presentation to a fully-fledged advertisement, use your video ads to attract customers. At Man's Audiovisual Productions, we do just that. We produce videos for business and event promotions, product demo videos, animated explainer videos, fundraiser ads, and much, much more. Engage your clients and sell online. We customize the video to match your brand design. Guaranteed to play flawless on all devices, including smart TVs. Contact us at telephone number 203-690-4342 or 
767-245-6238. Visit our website, mansaudiovisual.com or email us at derekvideo at gmail.com. Welcome back, listeners and viewers. Thanks for staying with us through the break. Um, the producers have just informed me that we have all of our channels back, so you can find us everywhere you normally find us on this weekend interview Facebook page, on TDN Radio's Facebook page, on TDNTV.net, on um, YouTube, um, TDN Network One, and on Roku, and, and all the other social media platforms. Um, maybe Sam can put up the link where if you click on that link, you can send it to someone. You click on that link and you can choose what format you will, you, you, anyone can view the program from. Uh, my topic tonight is the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. And my guest tonight is the president of that organization, Mr. Brenton Hilaire. He is the president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, a position that he has sat in and continues to sit in since August of 2022. And I also read through his resume, and um, one of the things I highlighted is his participation in Toastmasters. And so that any of you who have your business or any of you who are aspiring to be speakers, any of you who recognize that when you get up to speak, you want to be more influential, have more of a presence, I would encourage you to just contact the gentleman. He's at the Dominica Industry of Indi um, Association of Industry and Commerce. He's also um, the, the manager of Sagical Dominica, the agency manager. So check him out. I'm sure he will be happy to introduce you to Toastmasters. It's an invaluable experience to be part of Toastmasters, help you in your business, in your family life, in your social life, in your church life, in everything that you do, because they, they help you to develop every aspect of your communication. But tonight we're talking about the Association of Industry and Commerce. Brenton, um, I'm sure that you saw um, our, our sponsor. There are two of them I think that are particularly relevant to our topic tonight. You buy dominicaonline.com. Is, is an enterprise that that provides access to specifically small producers in Dominica, provides access to to the international market, the North American market particularly, for those products. Um, when I had her on as a guest, she adamant, adamantly said that she's only interested in the small manufacturer, she's only interested in those who are actually on the ground in Dominica producing. So if your members are, interested they can always contact her to um, find out what it would take to have their products represented by her i know she's helped some of them get their product on amazon she's helped them go through some of the hurdles for labeling and and all of those things to get products into the u.s so it's a valuable valuable resource um i'm sure for some of your, your membership the other one is man's audio visual they do a lot of the flyers i do for my for this weekend interview they do them um so they do flyers but they do full-fledged production where they show up and record and live stream if you want to your your, your activity um i've seen them do stuff in dominica they've done one or two local uh, promotional videos for people in dominica so if your members are interested in that they could of course contact my audiovisual they are on they are on the internet so you can google them and find them so are you i think you're muted i'm not sure yes yeah okay i can hear you now yeah so so no certainly um those and for people of course my listeners know of beacon dental health in boston it's a dominican owned state of the art dentistry um wow. service in boston i said dominican owned. his wife is from monstrad and he's from grassroots but um top top I mean, you will not any any dental facility you go in the U.S. and you walk into their facility it can match what is there, and they do all all of the services, dental surgery, orthodontics, everything at at their facility. Um, so it's Dominican owned as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we do have um, that kind of connection. Um, I want to 
the diving a little deeper based on what you what you've discussed so far. One of them you mentioned is the the importance of the, the data collection and what is being done or what can be done to improve the availability of data. Because I can imagine running a business in an environment where you don't have all the data with which to make um, decisions. And the second one is the relationship between the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce and say the government, um, the banks, and other players in the market whose act actions and decisions can affect the ability to do business. So let us, you can take either one in the other one, the, the importance of data and what we're doing about it and the relations that create the industrial environment in Dominica. Okay, I mean, data collection is a challenge. And what I would say is from what I understand is not a challenge that is unique to Dominica. It seems to be a current challenge. And it sometimes makes our economies a bit more weak. It makes us lose out on opportunities that exist. Uh, I mean, before coming into sales, I was studying accounting. So I'm an accountant by initial profession, but I switch into insurance sales. Uh, what has helped me in my profession as a salesperson is understanding numbers. So I don't just go out there and say, hey, do this or do that. I actually crunch the numbers. I look at the trends. I look at the ratios. And then based on that, I can actually reverse engineer what needs to be done in order to achieve a certain target. And essentially, that is the power of data. When you have data, you are able to make strategic decisions. It is no longer making decisions based on gut feeling or based on what you personally think. And I think that is where we often experience a lot of shortcomings in the private sector that mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs, they may start a business because they feel good about it. It's like right. this gut feeling. And yes, I think I need to open up a store over there because I think it will do well. But what is the data behind of that feeling to justify actually pursuing it. And that's one thing I appreciate about you know, the American business landscape when I have studied it. Their approach to business is a bit different. They will try it, gather the data, study the data as quickly as possible. And if it doesn't work, they will let it fail, close shop, and open up a new one. But I've realized that in the Caribbean, we tend to look at entrepreneurship a bit more personally. So this is my idea. I'm going to pump everything into it to make sure it succeeds. But in truth and in fact, sometimes it's going inside of it and it's falling down in a hole. You know, like when you have a sack and the sack has a hole at the bottom and you did not observe it and you're walking home with that sack. And by the time you reach home, you're watching the sack and you're like, where did it go? <laughs> so that is the importance of data if I have to simplify it first. And we often believe within the private sector, more within the MSME sector, that if I do accounts, if I share my data, it's like me giving information to the government to mind my business. But it's not really about that. The more data that is available, the better the decision making at the top. Because for them, it's very difficult. I mean, even for myself, I can speak from experience, it's difficult when you don't have the numbers and it starts to say, okay, this is exactly where we have the problem. This is how we address it. You have to do these one-on-one -on -one interviews in order to get a feel of it, but you still don't have the science bearing of it. And I think that's one of the areas that we have to work towards. I know that at present, sorry, ECCB is currently working on developing a credit bureau for the Caribbean. And I think that is exceptional. That is definitely a step in the right direction. It goes back to the data. So there will be data across the region, wherever you go, that they can access your payment histories, your comp statements, and see what kind of individual you are. So it will help us make better decisions. And when we make better decisions, it then helps the economy to be even stronger. So from the chamber, we 
have started looking at how can we start the process, but without being true, too intrusive. So we recently designed a survey that we want to have done quarterly to just gather some basic information to get a soft feel of how persons in the private sector have been doing. We launched it some time ago. It has not taken off as yet, but it's something that we are really serious about because we've understood the importance of being able to make strategic decisions. And it helps us in terms of the relationships within the industry. And you mentioned that. Because one of our functions is also to provide data or to provide information to external parties or sometimes stakeholders within the Dominica economy. For example, there are often times where the IMF comes down and we have meetings with them and they ask us very specific questions about Dominica's economy. Um, we have to answer those, but it takes a lot of work to be able to answer them because we have to have those one-on-one -on -one interviews with certain stakeholders to get a true understanding. But if the data was readily available, that mission would be easier. In the same way, when we have to advocate on behalf of our members, the data is necessary. Right. As a chamber, we cannot go to the government and just say, hey, I think you should do this. Why? And we cannot make those statements just based on the thoughts or the feeling. And that's where sometimes I personally feel that we have to somehow be able to be more careful with certain statements that we make, because it's easy to look at one situation and make a statement that makes it seem like that one situation is representative of the entire country. But when in truth and in fact, it's just an isolated event. So we as a chamber, we do our best to make sure that when we do go to the government, we make representations that are as best as possible representative of the actual state of affairs in the country. So we have good working relations with them. We have been invited to provide feedback and contributions to the budgetary process over the past years. That's something that I'm very proud of. So since I've been with the chamber, I've known us to make recommendations and they have listened to us. I don't expect them to listen to all of our ideas. You know, you cannot have everything that you want. That's just life. But they have listened to us on various occasions and have actually implemented some of our ideas in the budgetary process. And I think sometimes we have to do a better job of making ourselves a bit more visible. Sometimes people ask, what do we do? But some of the things that come out from the budgetary process actually came out from a discussion that we had with the government. So it's a very vital part of, of the process, piece of the puzzle. And it's not just with the government. We also have good relations with different financial players in the market. I mentioned that our membership is diverse. So the banks are members of the chamber. The telecommunication businesses are members of the chamber. And for example, if our members feel, okay, with a particular bank, they would like to have a meeting with them so that they could share some ideas with them to see how things could be made easier for them. Then because of you know the nature of the chamber, we're able to reach out to the bank and have that sort of meeting and invite those persons to have that face-to-face -face interaction with them. So it's easier for them. And, I tell our members and potential members that is one of the most powerful things of the association. The fact that we can ask for meetings and those meetings are actually facilitated. The fact that when we speak, we are sometimes listened to, as I mentioned, you cannot get everything that you want. It's powerful because if you are on your own, you are just one voice in the wilderness. You will scream, you will shout, as you do so, the wind is just going to fly that away and nobody's going to hear you. But when you have a group of businesses, small, medium, large, all singing the same tune and you shout, that wind is not going to have the same impact. Somebody will hear that voice and somebody will say, we need to listen to these people. So advocacy is important for us. And we do our best to represent the concerns of our members when they do arrive. Uh, we have been able to get some of them addressed, but as we know, 
in life. You win some, you lose some, but you keep trying until maybe one day there is value in what you present. So I hear that. Um, there, there's a couple of other areas. So in, in an economy, in broad, simplified terms, there is the public sector, which is government. And there's a the private sector, which are individuals that come together, do business and that sort of thing. So the in most places, they say, okay, the, the engine of the economy is really the private sector, which is your organization in a sense. Not every business belongs to the association, I imagine, but a good cross section of that. Um, you you did mention that you interact with the government, so that that that, that interface between the public sector and the private sector in in islands like in small islands like the Caribbean and Dominica, the government is the biggest fish in town, so to speak, outside, and so a lot a lot of the of the activity is influenced by the decisions of the government. What are some of the challenges that you think? Um, that your your members face being able to, to sustain their businesses in Dominica and keep it viable and growing. I believe I shouldn't say I believe. I mean it's a fact, and it's not unique to Dominica. We right now are all facing the challenges that have been brought on by the war in Ukraine. We are not, we are still within the grasp of that. Even with the impact of COVID-19, it is still impacting the Dominican economy. The shipping prices that have skyrocketed. Shipping. Mm -hmm. That is affecting us. And when all those factors come together, it increases the cost of living. So it is not, a situation that is unique to us and unique to our members. I mean, I saw a report sometime last year where inflation, I think, in Antigua was high, was very high. And it's something that you expect. So right now, regardless of where you operate your business from, inflation is going to be a topic of discussion. It's not a government's doing. It's just the nature of the world, the state of the world right now. And we have to find ways to adapt and work around it. We see that, for example, in America, they have been fighting this inflation thing for how long? And <laughs> I haven't gotten the feel that they have a grasp on it as yet. No, they, it doesn't seem like they've gotten in front of it. So, so how how is how are those things manifested? Is it are there a lot of failure of businesses? Is there a lot of shrinkage in in business activity? Is there um, a general reduction in staff? How, how are some of those things being demonstrated? From speaking to our members, first of all, there has not been a reduction in their labor force, a significant reduction, I would say. So it hasn't okay. been a situation where you hear a company letting go 50 employees or so. That, I mean, initially occurred in the Part of the pandemic, and that's where a lot of companies took that hard stance of you know trying to cut costs as quickly as possible. But in this current environment, we haven't heard of cases like that. What we have that's seen good. Good. is the cost of services, the cost of goods increasing. Mm -hmm. And when we spoke to our members initially, they all said that the prices have increased, and they have done their best to absorb those costs cost increases. The public might not it have known has that. Reduced, it has reduced their profit margin. Right. They have actually reduced their profit margin to try to keep the cost down to facilitate the Dominican population. People may not have known that, but that is how hard our members in the private se sector worked to try to keep things normalized. But it reached a point where they could no longer sustain that. And we started slowly seeing prices going up. And then I started seeing posts on social media where this is that price and that is that price. And I mean, the prices have increased, but we have to understand from a private sector perspective that they 
have a responsibility to keep the business active because at the end of the day, we are all in interconnected. And I said it like it's a three-legged stool. The government is one leg, the private sector is another leg, the population of Dominica is another leg. If any one of those legs is disrupted, that stool falls down, the economy crashes. So while we are crying about prices going up, if some of those actions were not taken and a company had to close down and then you send 200 staff home, is that going to be the better course of action? 200 people sent home, then you have maybe increased crime because people are now trying to figure out how they're going to make money. So you have to consider everything together when you look at what's happening. And I think our private sector has done a fabulous job. Dominica has been one of the most difficult climates to operate in just because of the nature of the natural disasters. We went through Tropical Storm America. We went through Hurricane Maria. We went through different tropical storms. Just recently, we had a rainfall. I mean, it was a rainfall that destroyed a lot of the infrastructure in the Southeast. And that is the sort of climate that our business is operating. It's like you never know when you have a clean stretch ahead. You always have to be prepared. And that's something that we also preach among the chamber and our members. Business continuity, which is having plans in place for the event, not the eventualities, but if something like that should happen. So the challenges we face are the same like others, but I think we have been doing a good job to navigate it. I just hope that in the near future, things start to normalize and then we can start seeing the reduction of prices and things becoming more stable. But from an economic standpoint, what I, I personally, I mean, I do presentations to entrepreneurs. So in my bio, you mentioned that I speak about strategic business development. And I'm usually invited by the DYBT to speak to young entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs about, you know, how to run a business, looking for opportunities. And I always say this, there are plenty opportunities in Dominica. I don't subscribe to the statement that our economy is bad. I personally don't entertain conversations like that. And that's how I train entrepreneurs because I tell them when you look at the size and as an entrepreneur, whether you're big, whether you're small, whether you're medium sized, your mission is to look for opportunity. And I mean, you can look at simple things as FETs. I'm going to keep it grassroots level, very mm -hmm. simple. Simple things like FETs. When you look at the trend, whenever there is a FET, it's often sold out before the FET. Right. How can you take part in a FET if you don't have money? You have money. Just this weekend, I went to an event, Soka Mimosas, and they had this bottle service. And um, they had this bottle of Hennessy, I think one liter, four hundred dollars. And I told them I'm not spending four hundred dollars on a bottle of Hennessy. Well, four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars on a bottle of Hennessy. I'm not spending that. And when I turn my back, I see the bottle going to someone else. Four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. So that is a sign that there is money in the economy if people can spend four hundred dollars on a bottle of rum after having spent money on the attire, having spent money on the ticket to enter. The, cons the issue is we in the business sector, and I speak about we, including myself, because as I mentioned, I'm in sales. I sell mm -hmm. insurance. Mm -hmm. They say people hate insurance, but I have to push it out there. Right. So our job, all of us, whether you're big, small, medium, is to find out how can you show value in your products to get people to spend on what you have to offer. And I have learned that once you offer value, people will pay whatever you charge. So I believe that our economy is very prime and ripe for opportunity, but we have to start developing and training ourselves to see those opportunities and be able to communicate the value of our opportunity. And a lot of self-development is required there. And I think sometimes we may lack that sort of ability to communicate that. And you mentioned Toastmasters. 
Toastmasters helped me. If it wasn't for Toastmasters, I would not be here tonight. I would tell you, no, no, thank you. I cannot do this. <laughs> but it has helped me to be able to communicate my thoughts, my ideas, and get my point across so that people can see value in what I have to say. So there is opportunity here. A lot of the people that we meet with, the foreigners, when they come to Dominica and they look at everything, not just looking at one sector, one piece, but when they look at everything that is happening, they all say the same thing that Dominica is being positioned to have so many opportunities in the future, but we have to start preparing ourselves for it. So, Brenton, um, a couple other areas I want to touch on with you. One, they sort of link. Um, we haven't spoken about the education of our young people in, in the sense that, um, for example, when agriculture was at the center of, of the engine, um, we had technical college who used to train agriculturalists, I'll call it agriculturalists in general, extension officers, um, people who take care of animals, um, all of those things, they, they, they would get that kind of training. As we meandered into construction, there were certain trades and so on, refrigeration, construction, auto mechanics. Um, I taught at the technical college for a little while when I was Thank in you. Dominica, so I'm familiar with some of those programs. Um, how does the, the, the association interface with the educators, whether it's Ministry of Education, whether it's director at the college, whether it's high school, whatever? How do they interface to sort of make sure that the education that the young people are getting is in tune with what your members are saying that they need in terms of their workforce? There's somebody who's having a, a comment here. Let me read it. Um, it's on the screen. It's difficult to get any time data from this government. Post Hurricane Maria, we tried to get data on the cancer rate, the psychological impact on certain sectors of the population. For research purposes, we have you to provide assistance that could improve the healthcare system for the general population. It was like pulling teeth. When we finally got it, the information was outdated. Um, you spoke about, about the availability of data, and, and sometimes we do um, information. The data we get is like from 2010, 2012. It's, it's pretty old. So I imagine that's a challenge that, 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 that you have. And, and so to keep in the question that I have, uh, are your members, say, for example, saying, well, we need to talk to the college to train statisticians or to train um, people who can collect and process data? What is the interface? What is, what is that interaction um, on behalf of your membership, if any, that's taking place between the education system and, and say, like, the, the um, association? So... We have not had, I would say, any sort of direct impact on the education system so far. Mm -hmm. I believe in the previous days, it was maybe not something on our mandate, mm -hmm. but we have had light discussions about it in this current board, but nothing concrete. But okay. it is something that we have to consider. What I can add is... We often get invited right now. Uh, once again, it goes back to the good working relationship that we have with the government. We often get invited to a lot of these working groups, these working communities to provide input from a private sector standpoint. Right. And funny enough, you asked this question and we recently were invited to be part of this working group that is currently looking at the curriculum for early childhood development. So I think it's a good start that we were actually considered to be a part of that. We provided our feedback from a private sector standpoint. I know that there are plans for it to also be revised as high as going to the high school level. So I do hope that when that working group is established that we are also a part of that. So we are not officially contributing, but it's something that I would not be surprised of if we are included for these discussions. But the government has been including us in various groups for our input. Right. And then also, I imagine um, maybe some of your members can, can probably um, invite themselves to make presentations to a business class or 
if it's a business that's doing something mechanical to the mechanical class just yes. just so the students can see someone in the real world who is employing you know people in that arena and that might, might pick their interest to to pursue yeah. further so yes. I, I think i think the opportunity is there um to even further influence um the the you know the availability of this of the um skills that's available to support the businesses and so i was in, in, in the conjunction with that um i wanted to ask you about the use of technology and how do you see all of these technological changes and advancement uh, how do you see your members adjusting and adapting and making use of and taking advantage of and you can talk about your i want to give you the opportunity to talk about your insurance and the importance of insurance um, so you can choose to jump in with that. Um, but but I heard you talk about be, you encourage your members to make sure they have plans for business continuity in right. the face of a lot of unpredicted events. And when I hear that, I hear insurance ringing all over that in terms of spreading, <laughs> spreading the risk. So I know it's a very general question, but if you can talk about how your members are adjusting to and using technology to enhance their ability to, to continue to function well if i have to talk about insurance i think we might go to midnight <laughs> <laughs> people who know me know when i get on with insurance sometimes i don't want to stop and let me just say <laughs> i know that i know that you you know we just plan for you to come back in your role as an insurance person um tonight you know DIC, but like a few weeks ago i had um gift us and one of his colleagues gift us johnny does insurance um, and they, they came in and spoke about whole life products and stuff like that um but from american point of view okay um so we would have to organize to get you to come back and talk about it from a, a caribbean i although i don't think it might be very different um but to talk about the different products and so on but but go ahead Okay, so technology, big, important, and it's not something that you can ignore in this current climate as an entrepreneur, as a business person, if you want to survive. Thankfully, the government has set up the Ministry for Digital Transformation. And I mentioned that part of the work that we do is providing opportunities to our members for training, and there was one activity where we partnered with the government. Uh, it was Honorable Kasani Lavel at that time, who was overseeing that ministry. Uh, we had a meeting where we invited different members from the private sector with presentations from a lot of people speaking about technology, the use of technology in the way that we do business. One thing I can say is that I believe our private sector has done a good job in adapting technology within their framework and that is what has helped a lot of them to survive despite the pandemic we had for example cases of fresh market who opened up their online store we have do it center with their online store and we had so many other businesses that created some kind of online platform to provide services to their clients a lot, a lot of the utilities take their payments online now right utilities did the same so it was a blessing and a curse at the same time, COVID-19. Because mm -hmm. during COVID-19 was the quickest that I saw people adopt technology. And it's, I bet most of those initiatives were initiatives that were maybe on the table for a few years. But persons were taking their time and wondering if it would have made sense. We don't have the budget for it. Right. <laughs> that, right? You know, the corporate world, we don't have the yeah. budget for it. Let's put that on the shelf for some more time, but COVID-19 forced everyone to jump on board. And I think we did overall a very good job in adapting. So for example, for insurance, we started doing digital applications. So no more paper, then we developed our mobile app. You can access your policy information, you can make payments via our online platform. So. We were part of the private sector that formed quick ways to adapt. What I want to encourage, if there are any entrepreneurs listening, is that we don't go back to the old way of doing business. 
Uh, what I mean by that is with the use of technology comes a lot of cost savings, a lot of improvement in service and efficiency. It is not something that we should discard and revert back to the old ways because going back to the old ways, meaning taking up all those unnecessary costs in our business. And we all want our business to be as profitable as possible. So we have to find ways to encourage our population, our clients to continue on using the facilities that have been set up. One of the things I love the most is our banking apps. Now, I know for those in America, I mean, this might be something numb, that's a norm for you all, but for us in the Caribbean, it's completely new. So right now, for any transaction that I have to do, I just do it from my phone. No more having to go in a line and stand 30 minutes in a line. I have a pet peeve. I can't stand line. So if mm -hmm. I have something to do and I see a line, I turn around. Right. So that has been a blessing to me. But I still drive in a city and still see lines. So it says that people have become comfortable and they are going back to the old ways. So we have to find ways to encourage that because, I mean, as simple as the less people that come in your physical location, the less hard your AC has to work. Right. The less hard your AC has to work, the more money you save. save on it's as simple your, your as cleaners, that. Your cleaners have an easier time cleaning. So they don't raise your price next year. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of costs. No, I'm not saying that you are pushing your clients away because you have to now find new ways of interacting with them. If it means sending them a WhatsApp, hey, how are you doing? Having a phone call to maintain your relationship, you have to invest in those measures. But at the same time, you have to recognize that there is cost savings to keeping technology. Now, in the workshop that we held, just to share some information, one of the guys I presented showed us this drone system. So right now, I think they are looking at it. I'm not sure how far it is right now, where rather than the field officers going to the actual plantation and doing the inspection, they would send a drone, a map of the area. Right. Now, figure that from cost savings, you're now paying a man the same salary, salary and you can now maybe look at free plantations in the space of one time. Efficiency. Yeah, and sometimes the date can the, the drones will do the data collection, and so it doesn't right. depend so much on the notes that you take. It's raining or whatever it is. Your pen doesn't write very well. Whatever, whatever. So, so yeah. So, so there there are opportunities that are opening up and facilitated by technology. And Correct. so, in general, do you see your members embracing that change, or do you see? I mean, I know COVID forced it on them, um, in a sense. But do you see that they? recognizing it as an uh, as an opportunity or or you get to see it's like oh boy some <laughs> kind of it's a change is scary sometimes for some it's still scary but slowly i've been seeing a wider adoption of it so i think we are getting there we just need within the private sector to continue reminding persons about the opportunities that exist there there's one exciting one i will share before i end up and on the topic mm -hmm. of the technology and it goes back to agriculture and one of the things with agriculture and i spoke to a group of farmers some months ago uh, what i told them i would like to see is an association of farmers you know just like we have an association of businesses mm -hmm. i personally would like to see an association of farmers because i have realized that when they have challenges it's often in pieces you would have one over there one over there but if you have a, an association and everyone comes together and you have that same impact of the one voice i think that they would be able to accomplish so much more and then sometimes from what i observe you have a farmer enough what a challenge but from the solution and someone in the south has that same challenge but has not yet found that solution so rather than having to go to the state a conversation amongst each other would have solved that problem so that's personally what I would like to see. But beside the point, going back to the area of technology, there is this young guy, Dominican, I think he, he studied in Toronto. And James Holding recently held an entrepreneurship competition. And his business idea was a mobile app where a farmer could go on, 
put their quantity of produce. So a buyer could go up there, sorry, go on the app, search for example, tomatoes and see exactly who has tomatoes and choose who to buy from. Right. That is a gem. Mm -hmm. And I think that once it is fully launched can be a game changer for our family industry in Dominica and hopefully will contribute towards changing the mindset of thinking of farming as a hobby. Farming is a business. Farming can do so much for us. And there's a lady I want to quote. She, I was part of a program with WUSC who brought together different players, the farmers, hucksters, hoteliers, retailers. And she said, a lot of the people in society today, that is the doctors, the lawyers, the bankers, they came from farming families. Oh, yes. Farming is so powerful. And I believe that we just need to provide the support for our young people to start seeing it as a business. So there is a lot of opportunity in Dominica. And I believe in due time, all of this is going to materialize. Uh, certainly. So we are at the end of our conversation, approaching it quickly. I, you, you did say that the is in existence for 50 years. Are you have you celebrated your 50 years? Do you have a celebration coming up? Do you have any special plans around that? We have not celebrated as yet. So okay. unfortunately, our executive director departed in February. It was more January, between January, and February. So for a period of time, we were sort of in transition, I would say. We were looking for a new executive director to head the day-to-day -day activities. When you said the party, they left the organization? Or they... Yeah, of the organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got a new individual that is Cohen John Baptist. So he, he is just getting settled into the position and we've started having discussions on the activities to celebrate this milestone of ours. So in the near future, we will be sharing those details with the public. Okay. So... What I would say is, I would love to have you back to talk about your 50th anniversary celebration, for sure. Um, I would love to have you back as an insurance, wearing your insurance hat, and to provide information as to how you can support the different businesses for continuity, how you can support families um, to, to be able to, um, to prepare for, for the unexpected and all of those things that is important of insurance. I think insurance is the most mis one of the most misunderstood um, and but most essential aspects of Correct. your <laughs> whole planning. And, and it's something that can make you present or come out from an event smelling sweet, as we say in Dominica and smiling. So, so we'd love to have you back as that. Uh, I I don't know if there's anything additional that you maybe wanted to inform that I haven't told you about. But if not, I'll let you do closing remarks. And maybe if there are folks listening tonight who are not yet members of the of the association, maybe tell them how they can contact you so that they can consider becoming members. Okay. So good night, everyone who is on this call. First of all, thank you for listening to this program. And I also want to say thank you for inviting me on your program. You're very welcome. My pleasure. We, as a chamber, have the mandate to represent our members. Everything that we do is up towards the end of bringing value to those members of ours, whether it is for advocacy, whether it is for trade facilitation, for networking, trading opportunities, everything we do is about our members. So if you are not a part of the chamber, there are a lot of opportunities that you are missing out on, just based on what I've shared. To go a step further, oftentimes when these international organizations have funds available to help the private sector, they don't go on the streets up and down looking for the individual entrepreneur. They come to the chamber most times and they would say, we have this available, who within your membership fits the criteria for it. So we recently had a case where funds were available to train entrepreneurs on contract law. 
and we were able to send some members of ours to Barbados to get in-depth training on how to understand contracts and how to design contracts with the businesses. So that is just an idea of the value that you can get from being a part of a chamber. Now, even if you are not in Dominica, but you have businesses that represent Dominica, uh, you want to help us to grow. We all have a part to play in it. If you were not there in the beginning, I mentioned that regardless of where you are, you have the ability to contribute, whether it's for a conversation, sharing an idea, sharing a network, you are able to contribute and we invite and welcome those things. You can reach out to me. My personal number is 615, area code 767, if you have any foreigners on the call, 615-7914. I am available on WhatsApp for us to have a conversation anytime. Once I am up, I'm available. That's my motto. My clients <laughs> know me like that. Huh? Like you rightly said, unfortunately, I don't sleep. So usually, <laughs> you know, we always. It, it's clear from your bio that you don't sleep. But um, Marceline Edwards is giving a big shout out to you. She's saying that she's on. She's on. She's part of the audience. She's there. She says she's bigging up Saji Core. Um, so. Hi to Marceline. <laughs> That's, uh, so please tell your guests that Marceline is here. Um, Hi, yeah, Marceline. Marceline. Very, very um, strong supporter of the program, regular viewer and listener, a uh, personal friend. Um, so, and uh, of course, if you talk to Marceline for two minutes, she'll bring the conversation to insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's in her blood. It's in her blood. But I want to say thank you so much for coming. It, it was a wonderful conversation. I think um, the audience they know a lot more about your organization right now and the things that you do. We're able to talk about what you've done for the last 50 years, what you'll be doing going forward, opportunities, um, the roles that you play, your interaction with government, your interaction with community, the interaction within the organization of various businesses. And, and and tapping into that knowledge um into really specific local knowledge that that you can gain from from talking to somebody because i can come from the us if an idea to do business in them because i don't understand certain nuances and just for that purpose i feel like if, if i'm in the organization and there are people who are thriving and I can have over lunch, over in a meeting, just establish that network. Somebody gives you some guidance. So I think, I think, as you said, to add value, what I will learn is from tonight. I think there is no doubt that becoming part of the chamber, as you call it, um, definitely brings value to prospective members. And so we encourage you to learn more. So Brenton, I thank you so much for taking your time and coming on. And as I said. There are a number of opportunities I see for to continue the conversation um, about um, insurance and your 50th anniversary activities. And if there are stuff that we need to advocate about, the financial environment to make it easier for folks to get financing and all of that. Um, so I wish you all the best and, and, and a very successful stint as president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Out. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And so listeners, there you had it. As I said, it was going to be an extremely um, delightful conversation. Um, Brenton Hiller, um, it took me how long to read his, his bio and he's, he's just contributing and contributing and contributing and being ever present. And, and so very much of a shining of a shining star maslin is saying that the expo on saturday july 15 has an insurance corner very good maslin is having um a repeat of the expo that took place a couple of years ago i um it's called um i i don't want to butcher it but it has to do with dominica diaspora at expo at an um you know, product expo. I'm asking them, sorry, I'm blanking out. And uh, we are fully involved. Like we carried it live the last time. Um, but you can reach out to Marston or you can reach out to me. I'll give you some information on it. If you are in the area, you provide a service and uh, you provide a product for sale 
in whatever way you provide service to the community. Um, they're inviting you to show up on the 15th of July. It, it was very, very well done the last time. Um, I, as I said, so many folks sold out whatever products they brought to the expo because a lot of people who attended were actually um, purchasing stuff. There's Dominican food on sale, there's Dominican drinks on sale, there are um, t shirts and crafts and, and, and everything body products, hair products. Um, I even there was even someone with a store that were that was showing you offering you the service to help you to write a grant for your business, show you how to do grant to raise funds, to do fundraising for your business. There was a young lady who is an artist and she um you could book a session as a group to go there and learn out and do some painting and sip wine and all of those things. Um, a lot of authors were there with their books. Um, it was a, it was also a grand time, a Dominican um, diaspora arts and culture exposition, July 15th. So, uh, those of you who took part in the meeting today um, in Dominica, uh, thank you for making your concerns heard. Those who organized it, thank you for keeping the the wheels turning. And, and 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 representing the voice of those who are asking for representation and who may not necessarily be getting it to their satisfaction. Our uh, master says the Dominican diaspora at Expo of artisan crafters, book writers, food, drinks, candles, soaps, lotions, portions, painting is going to be packed on July fifteenth. Also. Um, on the 10th of June, um, the high, the high, my guest from last week, don't forget, um, July 15th, um, June 10th, June 10th. So it's not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, um, the high.org is, is hosting an expo as well. This one is virtual. Uh, go to their website, the high.org, D A H E I.org. And you can register to to be part of the expo. I think today is the last day to register as a vendor, but you can also register to attend. And because it's virtual, you can interact with the vendors one on one. You can see information about their products. You can order products and so on. I think it's very exciting. June tenth, um, the high dot org. D a h e i. It stands for um Dominican Health and Education Initiative, the high.org, and their email address is aiddominica.com. Aiddominica at gmail.com. Aiddominica at gmail.com and their website is the high.org. It's next Saturday, so I encourage you to support them. They do all sorts of stuff they, um, in the health and education sector. And so they they, they require so much support. If you go back and look at next week, last week's interview with Miss Anne Marie Lavron, um, you will get all the information you need. Very valuable information that was given there. Um, that is just one of the exciting things about this week in interview is the amount of information that we bring to you. Um, so to you, my regular listeners, um, those of you who always show up every Wednesday, I'm so appreciative of your time and attention. Thank you so much for that. Stay safe. Um, those of you who remember May 29th, 1979, it was commemorated today in a, in a, in a meeting, a well-attended meeting in Dominica. And so I, I, you know, let's keep it, let's keep it burning, um, to all those who participated. Thank you for that. I think that is it. I don't think I forgot anything that I intended to mention. Um, so I will say good night. And once again, thank my guest tonight, the president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, Mr. Brenton Hilaire, who was my guest. And I, I, I'm, I'm grateful um, that he took time out of his busy, busy schedule to come here to be with us. And he mentioned Toastmasters. I encourage everybody to go check out Toastmasters. They're international um, and they have several branches and they meet all the time. It's a public speaking development organization, but they don't focus just on business communication. They focus on business communication, 
family life communication, career communication, just every, you know, just just being able to stand up, knock your glass, and give a toast. Um, all of that, you 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 come out so more confident, so much more confident um, in terms of of your communication. So wonderful experience for me. I hope it was for you as well. And I'm going to say good night. Oh, um, our producer Sam, his son graduated this year, and he's going to be big man on campus come the fall. So congratulations, Sam and Heidi. And of course, to the young man who did the actual work, you know, wish you all the success and safety and guidance as you go on to college, young man. Um, you know, we, we just stand back and watch you go and hope that um, you have a successful stint and, and you blossom in all the potential that we see in you. So good luck. Sam and Heidi, again, congratulations. And it, everybody else who has someone in their life who's graduating, um, congratulations, and we wish you all the best. All right, I'm gone. Good night. Have an enjoyable remainder of your week. See you next week, Wednesday. Um, Sam is, and his co-writer, Dr. Simone Matthew, um, are going to be presenting their puzzle book. They have a puzzle book um, that they created with create with stuff for the Dominica perfect um puzzle book for your kids to have over the summer and to give as gifts graduation gifts i think there are some adults who don't know some of those facts about dominica get your copy it's, it's available on amazon um dominic anu is the name of it it's a puzzle a crossword puzzle book all right i'm really gone this time i've said that five times but this time i'm gone good night everyone Thank you.